Hi there. I'm Nadira Jamal, hostess of the Belly Dance Geek Clubhouse online radio show. Welcome to this special interview series with some of the instructors from the 2015 Las Vegas Belly Dance Intensive. The intensive, now in its final year, will be held September 10th through 13th at the Flamingo Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas. To make sure that you don't miss out on this epic event, visit bellydanceintensive.com. My guest today is Terry Del Giorno, who will be teaching Fancy Footwork, Belly Dance 101. Terry is a lifetime student, performer, and instructor of Middle Eastern dance in the San Francisco Bay Area, and you can check her out at rockstoraise.com, spelled R-A-K-S-T-E-R-A-Y-Z.com. Thanks so much for joining me, Terry. Oh, thanks, Nadira, for inviting me. My pleasure. Can you tell us a little bit about the workshop that you'll be teaching at the intensive? Well, the workshop is geared for beginners, but it'll be an excellent review for the intermediate as well as the professional. Um, Being it is one of the first workshops offered in the morning, I'm going to intend to utilize the time not only for teaching material I want, but to offer a good warm-up to benefit all the dancers who might be partaking in you know, more advanced workshops throughout the day. So I'm hoping it to have a dual benefit. Mm -hmm. That's so important. Uh, When I was there last year, I actually overdid it a little bit in one of the workshops and had to take it easy later on. So, you know, just properly warming up makes such a big difference. Can you tell us a little bit about about your approach to warming up? Well, my approach to a a formal warm up is, you know, pretty analytical and systemic. Um, I prefer a dynamic warm-up, so we'll utilize a lot of movements in the warm-up that we will utilize in class, um, but also just to give full mobility to pretty much uh, every joint plateau that we can, even if we're not going to be using it, just to increase blood flow and keep our bodies uh, flexible, adaptable, and you know, feeling better. Mm-hmm. I'm glad you mentioned joint mobility because I think that's one aspect of warming up that sometimes gets overlooked. You know, we kind of think about the cardio component or about loosening up the muscles, but often like the real danger is in the joints. Yeah, I agree. And often for a particularly oriental dance, I mean, we tend to not do like a lot of squats. We don't have jumps or um, grand plies like in standard dance. So that mobility that can often be had through some of those kinds of things we don't get. Um, Depending on how you utilize your body, I mean, some people use a lot of heavy uh, hip joint action, but often for, you know, traditional oriental, I mean, it's done in only a couple of planes and it doesn't take advantage of um, a body's full uh, adaptability to more movements. So that's my goal is to, to get people's hips opened up to keep people's lower limb and ankles really mobile so that it will be ready for classes throughout the day, um, as well as able to participate fully in the class material that I'm going to share. Mm-hmm. And can you tell us a little bit more about the material that you'll be covering beyond the work, uh, beyond the warm-up portion? Well, I'm going to base the class pretty much on a basic beginning class, um, We'll start with isolation work um, after the the dynamic warm up, and you know which will include you know from head to toe and toe to head, and we'll work on some you know foot patterning because often um, most of us enjoy the drilling of isolation and I adore it as well. Is that the in the intermediate levels? There, there is sometimes a little disconnect about how to utilize those movements in space. I mean, it's great that we can all make magic with our bodies in a small space, but with opportunities like Las Vegas Intensive, there's a grand stage to use. And without the adaptability of the foot and the legs and utilizing your body in space, um, you limit your expression in the dance. And our dance, whether you want to say you're Turkish or Egyptian or even tribal, um, an aspect of utilizing the space around you and sharing your body in different formations is a really nice element to bring to your dance, especially if you're performing. 
Absolutely. I think it's very easy to get stuck in, you know, one of two modes, either this is a traveling step or tra traveling combination that I've memorized, or I know all these isolations and I'm stuck in place and I don't know what to do next. And so just being able to move with what you know makes such a difference. Absolutely. I'm really Absolutely. thrilled that you're covering that. Yeah. And that's, you know, for me, even as my own warm up, that's kind of where I start from. You know, I start from warming up, I start with my isolation, and then I, you know, incorporate it and integrate it with movements across the floor. And how do I use my feet? And how do I use my weight? And where's my energy of the movement uh, originating from? Where is it landing? Where, where am I directing myself in space? Mm hmm. I think that also this is a great um, focus to have for a workshop like this because, you know, when we think about belly dance, we get so focused in the hips and the torso that we don't always take the time to look at the smaller details of what's happening in the lower body. Yes. I mean, there's so many, you know, wonderful intricacies of just even how you use your weight. Mm -hmm. um, you know, even just taking like a figure eight and different stances and different way you bear your weight in your body opens up your expression uh, for dance so much um, that you're right. We don't get an opportunity to, to play with that, whether we're focused on one style or the other. And each one of those um, stylizations may use one more than the other and often people don't get the chance to explore or even have the idea to explore it because it's not being presented so that's like when I always take a beginning class my eyes are always opened to a different way of movement and thinking about it which I adore absolutely now, you know, we've talked about a couple of different angles that we could get from this class level wise uh, you know so obviously you know, folks who are new, let's say it's, you know, a friend who's coming to, to the event with a more experienced dancer or more experienced dancers who want to take a deeper focus on the basics. So, you know, from level wise, it sounds like anybody can benefit from this. That's what my intention is. But, you know, is there any other aspect that folks should take into account when they're deciding whether this is right for them, whether it's, you know, their personality or their learning approach or their style? Mm, I can't say that um, anybody's approach to learning that this would, you know, preclude them from getting something out of it. Um, I tend to speak a lot as a, as we move. So I generally don't stop the class and lecture while we're in the midst of dancing. Mm -hmm. I tend to present material while we're moving. And that's what my hope is to continue. That's just the way I teach. Um, I can't imagine that anybody would have limitations. Mm -hmm. The only thing is maybe if they're vision impaired. Mm. I mean, I try to articulate well, but I think that's just kind of a given in a dance studio, right? If somebody's vision impaired, um, there are challenges. Yeah. I've actually um, had a decent workshop uh, with a lady who did have a visual impairment, uh, a pretty severe one, and we were able to work around it by having her put her hands on my hips. But in a larger setting like this, you know, you kind of have to manage your time. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So that works really great in a one-on-one -on -one kind of context oh, yeah. or a super small group. Lucky her. Mm -hmm. Now, can you tell us why you decided to offer this topic specifically? Well, I I offered a number of topics, and I'm glad that they chose this one because my basic curriculum is based on, you know, a bunch of um, of our core movements, but I can remember as a beginner, particularly being frustrated, like going to a workshop or to a different class and trying to le learn material from different teachers. I was just, uh, you know, I was overwhelmed. Like what go this way? And I go this way and I do what? And particularly it was just about utilizing different body patternings and how the body moves um, I had done ballet, I had done jazz, I'd done modern dance, but, um, you know, Oriental and Middle Eastern, we use our weight and feet a lot, you know, a, a little bit differently. Um, our musicality is so much different than classical dance. Um, but I'm presenting it as the way I taught myself, putting all the pieces together of all the great teachers that I've had coming up the way I systemically categorize movements in my mind, because I was, I'm a slow learner, is how I'm presenting it. And that's how I present it to my classes. 
And I've even had people tell me, it's like, oh my God, I'm so glad you drilled this because even though she didn't call it this, I knew exactly what she was doing. And that's my hope is for my students particularly is after studying with me that they could go to any teacher and be able to to pre- you know pr- present their best self and be present in the teaching without having to work so hard to figure out what was going on because they were able to analyze movement and direction and body placement and you know it's a very systemic way to learn but it's opened up really nice artistic pathways for me mm-hmm. and i'm glad you mentioned that because you know, a lot of us, when we teach, bring certain assumptions into what we're presenting about what people are noticing about what we're doing. And especially when it comes to footwork and weight placement, those details don't always get articulated. Because for a lot of us, you know, the step that you take to get into the movement, we think of it as part of the movement instead of an actual separate weight shift Mm -hmm. or traveling pattern. And Mm -hmm. so being able, knowing what to look for when you're watching somebody else um, who may or may not be explaining it in words that that's huge that's a really valuable yes. skill to have yes I think so and because it was it was a big struggle for me even even looking at you know very 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 well celebrated dancers now on YouTube and when I see them in person that you know often incorporate multiple planes of movement within their oriental or their Turkish dancing um, just being able to intellectualize or categorize in my mind's eye what's occurring, it allows me to dissect the movement. And for me, getting a vocabulary and a drilling curriculum that would help people do that was one, a way for me to share with my students the work that I was doing because I mostly was a nightclub dancer and had big spaces to work in, banquet rooms. Um, So the spaces that I'm used to performing in were much larger than the studios I was teaching in. Mm -hmm. Um, And to be able to dissect and articulate movements that I had used performing and to share them, this I found was the easiest way for me because I performed for many years long before I taught. So um, I needed a way to articulate Mm -hmm. and drill. Great. And is there a tip that you could share that dancers could start using right away? Oh, I think, you know, one thing is just keep yourself mobile every day. Um, You know, foot presses, flexions, and rotations, just keeping the blood flowing in all your joints. Um, Find what your favored hip is. You know, think about where, where you usually wear your weight whether you wear your weight like doing a basic Egyptian or an undulation or even just when you stand at the kitchen, where is your weight? And think about that. Think about pulling up. Letting now, the pulling spine lengthen. up is one of those mysterious terms that Very, folks who did not yeah. get ballet don't get. Would you explain that to us? Well, pulling up, and it's kind of it's a misnomer because it's not complete. And if you think of the spine being our center, I, I, for me, I kind of think of my sp- I used to think of my spine as the back of me, but that's really not where the, the weight bearing bones are. You know, you've got round hockey puck type discs, but they're kind of like in the middle of you. If you, you know, if you think of your torso as a, a barrel, that spine, the weight bearing bones are in the center. And the things that we see in the back of people, those little bro- bony protrusions are just absolutely that they're protrusions they're not really weight bearing so you know the thing that we often have used in ballet and you've heard before pulling up from the hips well if you think of just coming upright and bearing weight through the spine which is really the center of you um and letting the length of the spine support the head that and knowing that the the neck is a, a true part of the spine and not a separate piece that can help people visualize that lift that occurs through your central axis. It's always a lift up. The other piece, okay, we always think pull up, but the spine bends and it's meant to have curvatures. Um, The other side of the coin is the middle part is the weight bearing. And I often think of muscular activity lets my sacrum drop from my center and the muscular activity and my shoulder blades 
drop down towards my waist. So there's a zone of, uh, you know, opposition in there that often occurs. You might hear about this pulling from top to bottom and away from your center, if that makes sense. It's kind of words are kind of hard, you know, hard medium to use when you explain energy like that. Um, but if folks see you in person in Vegas, they can ask you. <laughs> yes, they can. <laughs> yes. And I can draw a picture. And, you know, and, you know, if you think of through your center is up and in your back from your shoulder blades down, goes down to your waist and which kind of is your center where your diaphragm is, your solar plexus, our mass of gravity and then our sacrum drops. So there's this duality and it's supported by all the, you know, the, the muscular work, your lats in the back, your so as you know, coming um, from your sacrum down to your legs. But that's, you know, that's all stuff that we don't even really need to get into. But giving visualizations of pulling up allows um, a lightness of movement that we want to employ mm -hmm. on our bods. Because we're all, you know, we're all fighting gravity. <laughs> yeah. so. And what are you most excited about for this year's intensive? I think what I'm most excited about is taking classes. I love to take, um, you know, multiple classes through the day. It just gives me an opportunity to really um, connect with my own self in music and dance. And, you know, I love meeting new people and going new places. I'm coming with my best friends. So it's, you know, and plus I'm delighted to be able to present to this festival. Um, but I think mostly take classes, really. Excellent. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining me, Terry. Thank you, and um, look forward to meeting you in person. Me too. I know. It'll be a pleasure. Absolutely. And thank you, everybody, for listening. If you'd like to learn more from Terry, you can check her out at rockstoraise.com. Again, that's R-A-K-S-T-E-R-A-Y-Z.com. Or better yet, join us at the intensive. This is the last time that this event is going to be held, so don't miss out. You can register now at bellydanceintensive.com. And to listen to more interviews with our fabulous instructors, visit bellydancegeek.com slash Vegas 2015.